Hello, my name's Roisin, and generally speaking, I read between 8 and 12 books a month. But this month, which we are currently halfway through, as of the time of filming, I have already read seven books and DNF'd one, and I'm part way through three others. So I feel like August might be a big reading month for me, unless things radically change. And I thought it would be a good idea to do a mid month reading wrap up so that at the end of the month, I'm not here for 40 minutes talking to you about books. Um, so I'm going to talk to you now about the seven books I've read and the one DNF, um, and I will link any videos where I talk about them in other capacities as well in the cards above. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? It's actually eight books because I forgot, although I finished one of these in July, I didn't review it in my last wrap up. So we've got eight books um, to review plus a DNF. So at the beginning of this month, I was reading Mermaid Books, which vlog I just recently put up, and I'll leave links to the cards above if you would like to go and check that out. I read four books in which people either have sex with a mermaid or want to have sex with a mermaid. <laughs> that was basically the vibe of the video. So the first one that I read was Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. This is a very short little book from the 1980s about a housewife who is in an unhappy marriage and who has lost a child and also had a miscarriage. And so she's in a very unhappy place in her life and into that life wanders a frogman. He is um, an aquatic animal of some kind. Oh, it's not properly described but mostly he is similar to a frog and we're never quite sure if that really has happened because our main character has been experiencing various hallucinations leading up to this point as well. They um, embark on an affair. It's kind of silly um, as you can tell from that premise um, but it is uh, a feminist classic um, that talks about the role of a housewife and the uh, ways that people get trapped into relationships um, and feel that they are unable to leave um, and the difficulty of working your way out of a situation where everything is kind of unspoken. There is violence um, against multiple different people in this book and there is an assumption of otherness and violence against the other. Our main character is an, a kind of unlikable strange woman. She definitely has an affinity with people she knows and if she doesn't know you she doesn't care about you in the same way. I found the romance a bit like very much as soon as they met they were, she was like yes let's have sex even though you are a frog man um it was not really <laughs> very believable or make any attempt to be it just was like this is what is happening our character is discovering desire and it's very much about female pleasure and desire which she hasn't experienced before i think because it was so short i don't think it had really time to um, explore the ideas thoroughly they felt a little uh surface I just i just couldn't get into it i just found myself distance from it and although it is weird uh, which is something that I enjoy often in fiction I found that it was too matter of fact for me in terms of the way that it was um, setting everything out and also in terms of the plot it is for such a short book quite a lot happens. It was fine and it was very readable and I'm glad I've read it but it's not one that I have any interest in reading again and it's one that I can barely even seem to talk about because um, it's made such little impact on me. Then I read The Seas by Samantha Hunt and this book I really really loved. It is about a 19 year old girl who lives with her mother and her grandfather in this kooky little house on the coast in the north of the United States. Her father walked into the sea a long time ago but before he did he told her she was a mermaid because he was a merman um, and so she has grasped onto that idea that she is a mermaid. She is also in love with this man who is much older than her. He's in his 30s when she's 19 but they've known each other since she was a child. He's clearly drawn to her but also doesn't want to be because of the age difference issue. He has also just come back from the first Gulf War I believe it is. This book is incredibly beautifully written. It is a very somber and melancholy book that is exploring mental health um, but is written in such a wonderful poetic way. Her grandfather is a typesetter and um, his, his exploration of words is very much a part of this book and also um, the relationship between her mother and father and also her grandmother and grandfather come into play and there is kind of a wistful melancholy romanticism about our main character but there is this also this feeling of doom and a sense of dread and the, like something bad is going to happen looming over the whole thing. The cover is as navy as a bruise. I looked up the word navy in it and found that it shares a history with the word nausea and navel from the Sanskrit na or sna or snu which means to bathe as in the word snake. Unwound language can look like the white cord of an unwound brain. It can be dangerous to unwind some words. Jude wasn't in the navy, he was in the army. An army comes from R to fit, to join, see art, see inertia, the dictionary says. 
so it unwinds words a lot as it says there and there is just a really wonderful playfulness with language whilst at the same time it having such a serious topic which I think works really well together um, and as I said the atmosphere was just wonderful um, and I really really enjoyed it. Then I read The Pisces by Melissa Broda and I didn't love this one quite so much. I don't think Broda is for me. Um, so this follows a woman who is, is her name Lucy? Yes Lucy, um, who is doing a PhD in Sappho. She breaks up with her boyfriend at the beginning of the novel and kind of loses it um, and ends up going to California to dog sit for her sister in this house on the Venice beach and then she meets a merman, a swimmer, a mysterious swimmer in the sea who is a merman um, and has a lot of sex with him. It is explore an exploration of mental health and also desire and um, lust and how those things interact with mental health. A feeling of linking her self-worth to her desirability um, comes up a lot and her desire, her desirability played out through various different sexual relationships is more about um, perceptions of her than it is about anything innate coming from herself, um, which I think is something very relatable to a lot of women. Self-objectification that comes from internalised misogyny I think is a big part of this book um, and so she ends up going to this group therapy and meeting a lot of other women who are struggling with similar issues of desire and obsession and um, becoming overly interested in making someone interested in them. It began with this kind of uh, sarcastic humour um, and our main character is a terrible person who hates everyone um, and just judges everyone. Everything is about uh, status and perception. It was kind of biting and dark to begin with and I enjoyed it although Melissa Broder has clearly never met a British person because when she tries to write British dialogue it um, yeah it came off terribly. Apart from that I think it then strays towards this earnestness and it feels like it doesn't know where it wants to be. Does it want to be this like sharp witty uh, precise insight into mental health or does it want to be this like earnest book about love and self actualization which made me want to roll my eyes very very hard. Um, it leans very much into therapy language. It just feels very self-aggrandizing and not very self-aware. Um, it feels like it's trying to be self-aware but it is not capable of actually the actual depth required for that. It is very much on the surface. So when it becomes earnest it feels performative, it doesn't feel like it's actually delving into proper vulnerability. Our main character never really is able to be properly vulnerable. She's only been able to be vulnerable in the way that it is displayed. Um, but it feels like it's just trying to be so earnest and it made me want to be sick in my mouth a little bit. Um, and then the final one that I read was The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rofi which is set in the Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean and it is about a woman who is a mermaid and she has a relationship with a fisherman from this island but when there is a big fish uh, like a big fishing festival. Tourists who have come fishing, this is set in the 1970s, and they end up hooking the mermaid and bringing her back to land. And so our fisherman rescues her and she turns back into a woman. And we see what it is about the curse that turned her into a mermaid and is are they able to keep up the relationship that they have um, now she's out of water? Will the people who hooked her originally or, and will her curse, will either of those things stop them, prevent them from being able to live out their lives together? This one also had a great rhythm and a great lyricism to it to begin with. I really enjoyed that. I listened to the audiobook of it and I think that that worked for me because of the setting and because um, it's written not in full pigeon but there's definitely a touch of that. But having um, the voice read it to me um, uh, for someone who's familiar with that um, I think really helped with the the rhythm as I was saying the kind of the tone of the book. It was about like becoming a true woman what it is to be a woman the roles of men and women and their relationships with one another and it was very binary and it was very uh, rigid in that and I found that a little tiresome. Um, ideas of menstruation and penetrative sex being linked with womanhood um, both of those things that I don't really find interesting like not an interesting exploration. I felt like the, the more it got into um, those ideas and the more it got into like the plot it, it started off very much more atmospheric very um bringing to like a feeling of folklore um and a feeling of storytelling and music and the interweaving of those things and I really enjoyed those themes but as it got more into plot and more into like the actual machinations of how the curse worked and how they were going to play out how they were going to rescue people it felt a little convenient it felt like people were able to like stand up and give their spiel that was their philosophy this one was definitely um, the most plot heavy and the most um, like storytelling focused one and if that is something you're interested in I think you would enjoy this but for me um, it lost its way and towards the end. I then read two books that I got from NetGalley. The first one was Wound by Oksana Vasya Vasyakina which was translated from the Russian by Elena Alter. This is a story about a woman in Russia, I believe she's in her 30s, she's a lesbian and her mother has recently died and it very much 
revolves around the nut of her mother's death it's kind of a stream of consciousness um book in that so our memories and ideas and things she's thought about uh will come out and wrap back around to this death of her mother the plot is basically that her mother has died and she has to get her mother cremated and then take her ashes to their homeland in siberia via moscow we follow her on this journey this kind of nostos her return to their homeland um but via all of the memories of her life her memories with her mother who she, with whom she had a difficult relationship her mother was an alcoholic and was in relationships with various different men who were abusive to various different levels um but also her experience growing up as a lesbian in russia and her experience of different relationships and her own sort of codependency her own difficulty in trusting people and her own difficulty in believing her own memory there is a lot in this book about memory and about um the ways that memory is altered by your brain like the way when you re remember things the more you remember them the more they change so she talks about the ways that places she has lived have changed and the ways they don't feel the way they did when she was there but how much of that is the change of time and how much of it is her faulty memory um a lot of the time she is an unreliable narrator because she and this huge tragedy this kind of Form formative trauma of losing her mother has completely changed her own relationship with herself and her own memories everything is fractured through the prism of this trauma um it's very much an auto fiction book she talks about writing this book while she is writing this book she is a poet and so the writing is so wonderfully poetic lots of it reads like a prose poem and like i said there is a lot of that repetition and the circling back around again she even has uh long poems that she has written interspersed in it and like literary criticism and a discussion about like feminist literature in Russia um, which I found really interesting. It was a really interesting read, one that I'd not read uh, something like it in a long time. The other book that I read was Lie to Me which is by Veronica Ramo um, and is translated from the Italian by Lia Ianezko and it was really interesting reading these two back to back, um, both works of women in translation um, but they were both autofiction uh, so our main characters were both writers, they were both looking over their history, their childhood, their growing up um, and they were both suffering from a loss. In Lie to Me it is her father who has died um, and it is kind of coming to terms with that and her own family history that is the point of the book um, and so it was interesting reading them sort of in conjunction with one another although they are quite different. Lie to Me is a really quite funny book and it reminds it has that kind of dry witty kind of uh, slightly absurdist surreal humour that I really enjoy in fiction. It is about, it follows our main character from her childhood through growing up um, and her relationship with everyone in her family. Her mother who is obsessed with the fact that her brother might die, a very judgmental woman and is constant and is very like religious but in a very performative way. Her brother who is um, the genius of the family and is withdrawn and withheld um, and he works in the government um, and is also a writer and he, they have a kind of combative, re combative relationship but he is very much detached from the rest of the family and her father is also a strange man who likes to put up walls in their house and that is kind of a metaphor uh for what is going on in the family there are walls between them all they don't uh, communicate or connect um and this was as i said a very funny book in, in in that surreal strange way that i enjoy it it um was a very dry wit i thought it was a very easy and very quick read and i enjoyed it it is also one that was looking at memory and the ways that memories change things the ways your judgment um, and what you believe has an effect on the things you remember and how that affects your relationships particularly our main character's relationship with her father who is the one as I said who she has lost. He is almost a peripheral figure in this book but his loss becomes a bigger and bigger part of it and we come to realise that that is what she is struggling with what she is searching with. It talks about writing and the craft of writing and being a writer um, but instead of it being in that very serious way it's a much more kind of self-deprecating um, humorous look at that. Um, I enjoyed both of them um, but it was interesting reading them both at the same time. I did kind of get a bit confused at some points when I was reading Lie to Me and she would talk about being in a relationship with a man. I was like, I thought she was a lesbian. But no, it's the other book. The other book she was a lesbian. I also finally finished SPQR by Mary Beard, which is a book I've been listening to the audiobook of with my boyfriend. Um, but because we listen to it a lot at night, I'm not going to give this one a proper review because I don't feel like I've given it like my full attention. Um, it follows the history of Rome starting sort of in prehistory up until um like not the fall of Rome during the empire but kind of you know the 12 empires by Suetonius kind of till the end of then it feels like um it didn't go much beyond that and it talks about yeah it goes to pagans and Christians but it doesn't go much further Mary Beard is a very popular well-known classicist um probably the like 
popular classicist that is most well known in the UK um, and she is a good and interesting writer um, but as I said I don't feel like I've really properly allowed that to like sink into my brain given it the most attention that it deserves. It is a big overview book so it doesn't go into that much depth. Um, when it was before the first century BC I felt like I was learning a lot more than in the later parts but that is probably because I have a classics degree and so the first century BCE and the first century CE are like where the majority of my study was in classics so um, it's probably that's probably more down to me. You might learn a lot more from it if you read it. The book that I DNF'd was Wonderland by Ginny Reddy. This is a piece of um, a search for magic in the landscape as it says this is a piece of nature writing that was shortlisted for the Wainwright Prize in 2020 and it follows Ginny Reddy as she searches for um, a connection with the land and a feeling of the mystical, the magical, um, the something beyond her own experience with it. I found it very tiresome to read, I think possibly for similar reasons to the Pisces, my own um, threshold for earnest is quite low um, and this had it but I think more I found her an unlikable narrator that is not to say she would be an unlikable person but I found it difficult to get through this book because I found like she was just complaining a lot and I found that difficult to get on with and it's she was complaining about her not finding magic in the landscape but she was unwilling to connect with other people who do find magic in the landscape on the level of like folklore and their beliefs she was like no no please teach me how to talk to trees but I don't want to understand how you feel like you can talk to trees why you feel like you can talk to trees like what is behind that belief I just want you to give me the skill without any of that and so it felt like the way some people approach other religions that are not their own it felt very much like you are wrong for believing this but I want to be able to do what you I want to feel the connection that you feel without actually doing the work um and so I found that quite tiresome I think that I've read a couple of nature writing books so far this year and whilst some of them can be incredibly beautiful I think I need more than just nature writing in order to get on board with a book and this book just I, just I wasn't interested like also our, our interests completely don't match up because I don't really want an experience of the sublime it's not something I'm out there for but I enjoy folklore and people's beliefs and understanding where people are coming from in that sense um, and I think so I think that we have the opposite of that and sometimes when she did start to feel certain aspects of magic I was like that's just a fucking coincidence <laughs> yeah this one was not for me and I think maybe nature writing is not for me in general like nice nature writing in amongst other things can work but nature writing on its own it's just not enough um it doesn't hold my interest enough and then the final book that I read this month and I do have somewhere but I have left it wherever that is was Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tjarkuk translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones from the Polish uh, this is a murder mystery kind of a poetic murder mystery set in on the Polish Czech border in a remote rural location and we have a woman who lives um, in a very very isolated here and she is kind of unstable and very sad I think um, we t it talks a lot about loss and ghosts and hauntings and the people she is missing and it begins with the death of her neighbour who she finds with her other neighbour um, and they kind of move the body and do things with the body that you're not really supposed to do. Uh, we, we follow her as she is translating Blake with one of her former pupils and she is doing her duty of going around the houses nearby and exploring the landscape um, but also railing against the hunting that happens in this part of the world. Um, she is very connected to nature and animals and she doesn't believe in killing them. She writes letters to the police and is ignored and um, a lot of the time she seems very powerless so, and, and at the same time uh, other people start dying as well. This is another one that was really really beautifully written, I really loved the um, poeticism of the description, this one had lovely nature writing but that wasn't all it had. The scenery that opened before me was composed of shadows of black and white and of trees woven together in lines along the boundaries between the fields. In places where the grass had not been cut the snow had failed to blanket the fields in a uniform plane of white. Blades of grass were poking through the cover. From a distance it looked as if a large hand had begun to sketch an abstract pattern by practising some short strokes, fine and subtle. I could see the beautiful geometric shapes of fields, strips and rectangles, each with a different texture, each with its own shade, sloping at different angles towards the rapid winter dusk. And I enjoyed the exploration of this character, again another kind of unreliable narrator um she seems un kind of scatty and unstable but also has a very specific drive um overall i found it 
fairly predictable um, to know what was going on but there is a lot more it's more about the character and the language and the beauty of it than it is about the plot I would say um, the mystery is not that mysterious but um, I definitely enjoyed reading it is the eight books I've read so far in August hopefully I will read enough in the rest of the month in order to have a full wrap up for you at the end of August um, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you have read any of these I would love to hear what you thought of them and what your favorite book is that you've read so far this month Thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week and I will be here again very soon. Bye bye.